Hello, what we're going to talk about today is the permanent removal of a radiator from a central heating system such as this one and some of the do's and don'ts when you're doing that job. Now some of the main reasons for removing a radiator are you may be wanting to create a door to the outside and the radiator may be on the wall so it has to go. The other very common one is if you're demolishing a wall between two rooms and you want to create it into like a through lounge or make the area bigger, the radiator has to go. Now the first thing you need to do is to isolate the power from the, boi from the boiler, turn that off to make sure it won't come on. The next thing is find the drain point, usually at the lowest point of the system, attach your hose pipe and run it to the outside and then open the valve up fully to let the water, let the water drain out. Now the third thing you must do here is go to all the radiators above the one you're trying to remove and undo the air vents on each corner of the radiator. That will let the air into the system and let much more water drain out. So once you've done that I suggest you leave it for an hour or two just let the water drain out, make sure it's as much as possible as drained out and then we'll move on to the next stage. Okay we're at the point now where we've drained the system We've checked the hose pipe uh, at the lower point and there's no water coming out of there now so we're pretty sure that most of the water is out of the system. So we're ready to take the radiator off the wall. Now this one has already been disconnected. I've used the rad clamps to block up the ends of the radiator because when you take the radiator off the wall you will find invariably that there is some black staining water left in the bottom. When you take it off that could come out potentially all over your carpets and floor coverings. Just don't forget you have to carry this radiator probably through the house to get it outside. So be, be warned about that. So we're going to take the radiator off now and uh, look at the next stage. Okay as you can see now the radiator has been taken off the wall and that's been placed outside. Now another little tip here is to unscrew these brackets and tie them onto the back of the radiator with a piece of string and a piece of wire. And that will make the job a lot easier if you're going to refit that radiator somewhere else. So the next thing we need to do is deal with these pipes. Now contrary to what people tell you, you do not connect these pipes back together. In fact it's an absolute do not because what you'll have is a small heating circuit which will be continually on wasting fuel, wasting gas. So you do not want to reconnect these pipes together whether it's a single pipe system or a twin pipe system. You don't do that. What you need to do is trace them back as far as you can to the actual branches. They will be branched in somewhere in the circuit and, and cut them off and cap them as close as you can to that to that T piece. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to actually cap off and blank off the pipe work. Now we've got to the point where we've taken off the radiator and that's been moved outside and you're going to be left with two pipes now sticking up at each end of where the radiator was and we need to get these disconnected from the system. Now you're going to have to do some investigation work here now to find out where they're actually connected to which is going to involve uh, probably moving a few carpets and pulling up a few floorboards because each inst installation is, is different. So let's assume you get to the point where you're going to find out where they're connected up to. You're going to find something like this, which is a, a 22 mil main line with the 15 mil branch. Now this is 15 mil. Let's assume it's 15 mil going to your to your radiator. You'll have one connection on the floor and one on return. So you're just interested in dealing with these two pipes here. Now I'm saying that you've got 15 mil pipes. You could have uh, there's another alternative two sizes, which is 10 mil, which is this, and a very rare but still in existence 8mm you may have that as well. Now to give you an idea uh, of what, what of determining the sizes you may have I'm going to have there's a palm coin I'm going to place the palm coin underneath the pipe there so you can see that's 15mm that's 10mm and that's 8mm like I say these are much rarer but the, you, you, you could be um, you could encounter these but uh, it's more like you're going to have either the 15mm or the 10mm uh, microbore. Now there's, let's assume you get to this point here which is the branch or the, the T-piece. You need to cut this pipe about approximately 3 inches away from the end. If it's got to be longer it's got to be longer but try and get as close to this line as you possibly can. So a word of warning before you cut this pipe is make sure you've got plenty of towels and absorbent cloths around you and any containers which you can catch water which you can actually place underneath the pipe because sometimes you can have quite a lot of water trapped in, in there and when you cut it you'll be in a bit of a panic because you can't stop the water coming out and it can cause damage to uh, ceilings and all the rest of it. So um, make sure you've got some uh, absorbent cloths with you. So let's assume you've cut the pipe off now and you clean the end off a little bit you need to, we need to blank this off. So there's two types of blank 
One is a solder type, which is this type here, which you place over the end, you'd solder, and then get, get a blow lamp and solder it up. But if you're not familiar with soldering pipes, strongly recommend you don't do that. Use these compression fittings, which is a non heat, uh, non heat type um, fitting. This is a 15 mil compression blank off. So you need to go to your hardware store, plumbers, merchants, whatever, and ask for a 15 mil blank off, assuming that it's a 15 mil pipe. Of course, if it's 10 mil, you need to ask for a 10 mil blank off. 8 mil, 8 mil blank offs, and that is an actual 8 mil blank off there. Compression, all the same compression. So how these work? So you cut the pipe, drop over the nut, come in three parts. Get the nut, the plug, and the olive. Dead simple. Slide the nut over the end of the pipe like that. Then put the olive on. Now a little tip here: get some PTFE and wrap it about three times round the olive. One, two. Three. Not on the threads of the fitting, that's pointless. Just coat it round the olive, that softens up the olive. Put the blank on and screw the, the nut up like that. Just hold one side and use a spanner and tighten up the other side like that until it's reasonably tight. Don't overdo it, just reasonably tight. Now once you've done that on both pipes, you're then ready to refill the system. So the first thing to do is go down to that drain off pipe, the drain off cock, and make sure that's turned off. Leave the pipe on for now, but just turn it off. Next thing, don't forget all them bleed nipples that you've undone on the, uh, on the other radiators. Make sure they're all closed off. And before you fill the system, I've got to point out that you need to replace the inhibitors in the system. There are other videos in here which show you how to do that. Um, so let's assume that you've got your inhibitors in and you need to open the water to fill the system. So you're going to reintroduce water into the system. Go around bleeding the radiators from the top down. I strongly recommend as well you have somebody monitoring these joints here while you're filling it. Um, just, just to make sure everything's okay. So go around and bleed all the, all the radiators. Um, get everything full up and then keep checking these joints here. Once it's full up, put the heating system back on and get these two pipes fully heated and then check them again. Make sure everything's absolutely dry and everything's okay and everything's working before you put the floorboards down. Once you've done that, put the floorboards back, put your carpets back, take off the holes from the um, drain off in, in the cellar and that's it, you remove your radiator. So that's how to do it. So um, good luck and uh, thanks for watching.